Well, hello, fellow classmates and Dr. Crawford. This is Roy Howard. This is my presentation on the Capital Budgeting Case Study Analysis in Financial Management, Class 5113, BL53. My Capital Budgeting Case Study Analysis is about Acme Incorporated which is a multinational conglomerate corporation providing a wide range of goods and services to its customers. As part of its budgeting process for the next year, it has several projects under consideration, so it must decide which projects should receive capital budgeting investment funds for this year. I will be discussing and analyzing projects A and B for my presentation. The cost of Acme's long-term debt or market value of capital represents 60,000 bonds with a duration of 30 years. The yield to maturity is 15 years. The price of each bond is currently selling at $874.78 each with a coupon value of 10%. Looking over the marketing values of capital for Ag Incorporated, we understand that before tax cost of the debt is 11.8% and the after tax cost of debt is 7.08%. The cost of 100,000 shares of preferred stock and a book par value of $100 per share brings a dividend rate of 9% per share. A current market price of $90 per share, and the dividend was $9 and the cost was 10%. The average cost of retained earnings per the Gordon growth or constant growth model, common stock shares of 5 million at a price of $17 with a growth rate of 10%. Therefore, the cost of the returned earnings was 14.21%. Per the capital asset pricing model, the cost of retained earnings was 14.54%. Then averaging both resulted in retained earnings of 14.37%. The long-term debt generated a weighted average cost of capital of 2.5%. The preferred stock generated a weighted average cost of capital at 0.61% and retained earnings generated 8.34%, all combined for a weighted average cost of capital of 11.49%. The first project I'll discuss is Project A. This project required an initial investment of $2 million in equipment, which will cost an additional $130,000 to install. Acme will use the attached depreciations to expense the equipment. Once equipment is installed, the company will need to increase the net working capital by $250,000. The project will last six years, at which time the market value for the equipment will be $150,000. This project will produce a product with a sales price of $20 per unit, and the variable cost per unit will be $10. The fixed cost would be $200,000 for each year, and because this project is very close to current products sold by the business, Management has expressed some favoritism towards this project and has allowed for a reduced rate of return of two percentage points below its current weighted average cost of capital as the valuation hurdles it must meet or surpass. The depreciation schedule goes from 2014 to 2019 with 70,000 units sold in 2014, 100,000 units sold in 2015, 65,000 units sold in 2016, 70,000 units sold in 2017, 65,000 units sold in 2018, and a forecasted at 55,000 units in 2019. The internal rate of return for the project A is 7.51%. Our textbook advises the project's internal rate of return is the discount rate that forces the present value of the expected future cash flows to equal the initial cash flow. It's equivalent to the discount rate that forces the net present value to equal zero. One might ask, is the discount rate that causes the project's net present value to equal zero helpful as an evaluation measure? The reason is that the internal rate of return is an estimate of the project's rate of return the company would actually earn if it invested in the project. If this return exceeds the opportunity cost of the funds used to finance the project, then the difference benefits the firm's stockholders. On the other hand, if the internal rate of return is less than the cost of capital, stockholders suffer loss in value and must make up the shortfall. The net present value for this project is negative. The profitability in X is 0.94, and the payback period is 4.89 years. The net present value accounts for the time value of money. The net present value relies on a discount rate that may be derived from the cost of the capital required to make the investment in any project or investment with a negative net present value should be avoided. 
One important drawback of net present value analysis is that it makes assumptions about future events that may not be reliable. If the calculated net present value of a project is negative, the project is expected to result in a net loss for the company. Additionally, the internal rate of return is lower than the weighted average cost of capital. The payback period of 4.89 years is favorably less than the estimated six years to complete the project. However, as a result of the combined analysis and according to the rules, the company should not pursue this project. Project B requires an initial investment of $2 million in equipment, which will cost an additional $100,000 to install. ACME will use the attached depreciation schedule to expense the equipment. Once the equipment is installed, the company will need to increase the networking capital by $70,000. The project will last six years as well, at which the time the market value for the equipment will be $50,000. Project B will produce a product with a sales price of $40 per unit, and the variable cost per unit will be $15. The fixed cost will be $150,000 per year, and because this project is not close to current products sold by Agni, management wants to adjust the risk profile of this analysis by imposing a two percentage point increase over the firm's weighted average cost of capital as the evaluation hurdle the project must meet or surpass. The forecasted units sold scheduled from 2014 to 2019 reflect as 50,000 units sold in 2014, 60,000 units sold in 2015, 70,000 units sold in 2016, 80,000 units sold in 2017, 90,000 units sold in 2018, and 80,000 units sold in 2019. The net present value of product Project B was positive at $2.2 million. The internal rate of return is 42.58%. The payback period is 2.24 years and the profitability index is 2.01. Based on these calculations, Project B should be accepted by Acme Incorporated. The internal rate of return is higher than the weighted average cost of capital. The payback period is considerably less than the project's lifespan and the profitability index is higher than one, so Project B should certainly qualify as an acceptable project. During the project analysis of each project, we reviewed several variables to the initial project scenario. This required lowering the price of each project by 10% and also reducing the sales volume by 10% in each project. What I found was that when these reduction scenarios were deployed, it significantly changed the results of each project. Simply decreasing the price by 10% and lowering the sales volume by 10% changed the internal rate of return, the net present value, the payback period and profitability index of each project. But it was not significant enough to change whether the initial project scenario acceptance should be changed. After consideration of the two project changes, it was deemed that project A should still be rejected and project B should still be accepted. This type of analysis is beneficial in determining whether or not a project is physically prudent and responsible, which will achieve growth revenue for the organization or if it is a necessary risk to entertain. Net present value accounts for the time value of money, which leads to more accurate results. It helps eliminate some of the uncertainty in future cash flows of potential projects. This analysis can be used to predict future cash flows and to help build a budget for potential projects. One of the limitations of this analysis is that it's based on assumptions and probability when dealing with future cash flows. Anytime you're dealing with assumptions and probabilities, there's a good chance the analysis will not pan out successful in the way of positive hopes and expectations. Also, some of the calculations used do not account for the time value of money, so they are less reliable due to the variation this presents. It is probable to achieve different results at different time periods in the year. This analysis can be used for building budgets. It can also help predict a project's risk potential and profitability. This analysis and methods are used by organizational financial managers to make critical important financial decisions on whether or not to accept or reject a given project. When completing the analysis review, having one or more negative numbers in the red could mean the difference between a project that is deemed profitable or one that exposes the firm to unnecessary risk and a potential loss of revenue and investment funds. If the net present value is too low, then the project will not achieve the investment results expected. If the internal rate of return is less than the weighted average cost of capital, the project is not worth the risk of investment. If the profitability index is less than one, the project will not achieve the expected results desired. The payback period represents the number of years required to recover a project's cost, or how long it will take to get the firm's money back. 
This calculation provides an indication of a project's risk and liquidity and is easy to calculate. However, it has weaknesses as it ignores the time value of money, ignores cash flow changes occurring after the payback period, and there's no specification towards an acceptable payback period. However, the spreadsheets used in this analysis are very helpful as they show the breakdown of sales, the variable and fixed costs, depreciation schedules, the tax expense, operating cash flows, and all other informational variables for each of the different years with each year using the exact same formulas. So we start with the price, the variable costs, we start with all of our known financial details, and we utilize this information with the accepted formulas to calculate the unknown financial information. Capital budget is used to determine the acceptance of capital spending on long-term projects and those requiring significant capital investments. Capital is generally limited, which demands that the proposed capital projects be quantitatively as well as qualitatively analyzed prior to committing of the funds. Essentially, the capital budget attempts to stabilize the planning horizon. Its primary advantage is that it continuously shows one full year of anticipated budgeting, expenditures, revenues, and other activities. Budgets may typically be prepared monthly, quarterly, or annually. It's not uncommon for a company to prepare weekly budgets to track sales, deliveries, and distributions. These budgetary plans are used to establish current financial and performance goals. They are equally important in settling benchmarks for the future as capital budgeting's goal is to pre present the valuable financial information required for managers to make proper decisions that will lead an organization to meet its financial objectives. Thank you for listening to my presentation on capital budgeting case study analysis and good luck with your capital budgeting.